There are some people, actually there are a lot of them, and I refer to these people as sportsmen or hunters. They are looking for prey because they are predators, and you and I, being autistic, make the ideal prey. It's someone they can abuse, take advantage of, to boost their ego. They are stealing that sense of value, that sense of worth from us. They are invalidating us, and in so doing, in their twisted way of thinking, they are somehow validating themselves. And we take it personally, but we shouldn't, and uh, you need to keep in mind that I'm not saying we shouldn't take it seriously or we should be dismissive. I'm saying when we take it personally, we react the wrong way, but it is personal. I mean, this person has committed an affront, an offense against me personally as an individual. So why should I not take this personally? Well, I think of it in these terms. Let's say there is a sportsman, there is a hunter, and he's going rabbit hunting. He's not looking for a specific rabbit. He's looking for just any rabbit that's a rabbit that's plump enough that would make a decent dinner. So it's not about you. It's just the fact that you happen to be vulnerable. It's not that he's looking for you as an individual. He doesn't have your social security number. He doesn't have your license plate. He isn't particularly looking for somebody who is your height, age, weight, you know, it's not about you. It's about anyone he can take advantage of. And by the way, you're not the first rabbit he's gone after. And you will not be the last. I say he, it could be a her, often it is. So you need to understand that my way of thinking is we're just a rabbit minding your own business. And uh, these offensive people, these sportsmen, these hunters, are hunting rabbits. And we just happen to be a rabbit. And it's not because we are a specific rabbit. It's just because we're there. And we're vulnerable. So in that sense, I say don't take it personally. But we do have to take it personally once we become the person who is under attack. We're the rabbit the guy decides he wants. Okay, then we take it personally, but we need to keep in mind that we take it seriously. We understand that this person isn't coming after us because I am me, but because I just happen to fit the profile. Step number one is we need to, what I call, regulate self-talk. These people want to lay a trap for us because they know innately that we are going to act reactively. Uh, when somebody affronts you, commits an offense against you, your natural response is to react. You really can't help but to do that. I mean, you may react by fighting back or you may react by... Uh, as I said in another video, retracting into a shell, we may react by leaving, whatever, but they prompt a reaction. They trigger a response. And what happens is when we do that, they deem that uh, they have won the war, we fed their ego, they're satisfied for a time being. Now, if we tend to fight back, which often we do, they really love that. And it's all inside our head. We're thinking, this person did this to me, so I'm going to get it back. But that's because we're taking it personally. We think this person, we think we're the only rabbit in the woods. And this person came after us specifically, and we're going to teach them a lesson. But what we need to do is understand this, that to uh, teach this person a lesson, we can't respond with a reactive response. Because that's what they want us to do. That's why it gives them the ego boost. In so doing, we are giving them exactly what they came hunting for. So number two is we want to apply what I call a tactical retreat. Tactical retreat. That is to say, we want to reverse invert the trap. Instead of them snaring us, we want to snare them. So how do we do that? Well, we lure the offender away from the high ground. He assumes he's going to win or she assumes she's going to win because in their mind, this is kind of like a contest. Me versus the rabbit. You know, what kind of contest is that? Well, it's a contest they can win. That's why they do it. People tend to not go after grizzly bears for dinner because grizzly bears may fight back. And uh, they certainly don't go after grizzly bears uh, barehanded, so to speak. They go after prey that they know they can defeat, and they know, put that in quotes, they can defeat you, but you're not reacting the way they thought you would. You are tactically, tactfully retreating 
You're not reacting at all. They don't know what to do with this. But here's the key. You are acting responsibly, not reactively. They expect you. They count on you being reactive, responsive. But we're being responsible, not responsive. We're being quiet. Okay, number three is this. We need to understand having regulated our self-talk and made that tactical retreat that leaves them uh, in a quandary. They don't quite understand why we're not fighting back, why we're not jumping into the hog pen along with them and fight in the mud. They don't get that. They don't understand why they weren't able to lure us into a fight. And now what? Well, they're kind of befuddled. They're kind of confused. So it's all about provocation. It's all about ego. They want to provoke us into a fight so they can feed their ego because they are just absolutely sure they can beat us. It's a contest in these people's minds. This is one of the crazy elements of human behavior that... Uh, you know, I understand it, but I wish it wasn't there. But the fact of the matter is, it is there because these people live in the neurotypical hive mind, which is all about climbing and crawling and fighting to get as close as you can to that coveted alpha position. That's the way these people think. And the more people they can uh, defeat in this game they play, the closer they get to the alpha position. And, well, here we are ready for them to just step on our heads and push themselves a little bit higher, and it's all in their mind. But the fight is there nonetheless. It's silly, in my opinion. It's dumb. It's one of the uh, black marks on human behavior, but that doesn't make it go away. It is there, so we have to deal with it. So we understand this is about provocation, which is all about feeding their ego, which in their mind lifts them a little bit higher, in the social uh, melu pushes them a little bit higher toward the alpha position. And uh, once we recognize that it's not about you, then we are able to, when I understand it's not about me, I'm able to respond accordingly. And I say, you know, this guy is fighting or hunting rather rabbits because he knows rabbits behave a certain way. I'm not going to behave like a rabbit. This is a turf war. And in a sense, not literal, unless you have a nasty neighbor, but this is a turf war in a sense that he is encroaching upon your sense of affirmation, your sense of worth. He's taking away your sense of worth, your sense of affirmation, and applying it to himself. He's come into your field, so to speak, and stolen your crops. This is another analogy I guess we could use. And... Uh, we want him out of there or her out of there. So what are we going to do? Well, we understand, yeah, it's a turf war. It's about stealing from us to elevate themselves. Well, step number four is having understood this is a kind of a turf war. We understand that we need to have a sense of a solid sense of self worth because that is our barrier. That's our boundary. That is the wall of the fence that keeps him or her out of our territory. So, you know, imagine a rabbit who builds fences to keep the hunters out. That could be a nice story for children, I suppose, but this is real life. And we're keeping them off our turf by reinforcing our self-worth because that is where they see our soft spot. So we build this internal security by clarifying exactly what our personal values are and steadfastly adhering to those. I will not be bullied. I will not be lured away. I will not engage in a fight. What I'm going to do, and let's summarize it with this, I'm going to stay in my lane and I'm going to let the offender make all the mistakes. Now, he is not expecting that. He or she is not expecting that. They're expecting you to make the mistakes. For example, they will accuse you of doing something, and you react by accusing them of doing something. And then what do they do? Well, they take the position that you are the offender because you said something about them. They don't bother to mention that they are the ones who initiated the confrontation. Now, in rare occasions, they may physically punch you in the head. 
What do you do? You punch them back. And what do they say? They say that you punched them. They don't say that they provoked you. In fact, they will flat out deny it. They make you look like the bad guy. Well, what if you don't react that way? What if you don't punch them back? What if you don't do this tit-for-tat thing where you are doing exactly to them what they did to you if it's always negative? Now, if it's something positive, yeah. I mean, if somebody compliments you, sure, tit-for-tat, compliment them back. But uh, in this case, sometimes what we need to do is just kind of uh, back off and not punch them back not return insult for insult, but let them be standing there naked with their insults and their hostilities, making them look bad what's happened, is they've just fallen into their own trap. Then we point it out. That's how you reverse the trap, is you stay in your lane. This is my philosophy of life. I'm going to stay in my lane. I'm going to let the offenders make all the mistakes, and when they do, I'm going to point them out. Now, there's this thing called a smear campaign that uh, offenders, uh, love sportsmen, hunters, love to engage in. It's kind of like uh, smoking out the rabbits. I, I'm not a hunter. I don't know how you, how you lure rabbits out of hiding. But uh, say they use smoke. Okay, the smear campaign is a good way to do that. And so they get anybody and everybody who will listen to them to be convinced that you're the bad guy. But... It's obvious they're the bad guy, right? Because they're the ones spreading the uh, slander. But people don't pick up on that immediately. But what happens is, in time, if you pay close attention, and by the way, taking notes, literally writing down offenses, why not? Is there some reason not to do that? What about video recording offenses? You know, I've, I've said this in other videos, but um, my cars have cameras in them, you know, dash cams. My house is surrounded by video cameras. Um, my uh, cell phone, all cell phones have cameras in them. Why not turn them on? Nobody knows. They don't need to know. And if nothing happens, you just delete the file. So what we're doing is we're taking notes. Okay, we're recording videos, whatever. But you may want to do this intentionally if it's legal in your jur jurisdiction when you know this is a predator and they're coming after you, just stay in your lane. Let them go ahead and be the predator and catch them in the act. Don't react. Don't be res responsive, but be responsible. There's a huge difference, by the way. And sometimes the best response is no response. Sometimes the best argument is to stay quiet. Let them do all the talking. Let them do all the, all the bad things. Let them make all the mistakes. So uh, let's tie all this together by simply saying that what we need to do is get our act together and learn to not react. I mean, how hard is that? It can be very hard. It can be very difficult. It's tough for me because, yeah, these people do get inside my head. And I do think about it a lot. And they may have forgotten about it. It could be a f an offense that happened decades ago. You know, I'm in my 70s. I've learned a lot of things. And people who, uh, these predators who have hurt me decades ago are now dead and gone. I mean, some of them, literally, they've died. And for some reason, I'm still harboring those memories inside my mind. Um, why? Why do I do that? I guess it's human nature to do that. But uh, something else is, that is human nature is our ability to reason, our ability to think, our ability to strategize, our ability to apply game theory. So we are predicting, like playing chess, we are predicting what the other guy's move may be. And then in our mind, like playing chess, we are considering all the moves they could possibly make and how we will not react but respond to them and that's what works so the point is don't take it personally you know it's not like they're after you they just want a rabbit you happen to be there but we do want to take it seriously because it is serious and if we let these people get away with hurting us it can have serious consequences. There is a circle in the lower right-hand corner. When you click on that, you become a subscriber, part of our family. 
upper left hand corner there's a rectangle click on that and that's our i call it our library you can watch more videos and we'll see you all next time